we're going to be covering aspects of knee reconstruction using the Infinity system. I'm Tim Spaulding from Coventry and I'm joined by my colleagues Peter Padong from Antwerp in Belgium and Seth Sherman from Stanford in USA. I think it's important to mention with ACL surgery that there is certainly an evolution which challenges the results and our aim is still to reduce the failures and we want to try and influence the later effect with osteoarthritis. To do that, there are many links in that chain for success, essentially, and they're all worthy of a lecture in their own right. But we have to try and focus on various aspects within individualized techniques for the patient and for the surgeon. And that is really the aim of the infinity system produced by ConMed. I like this link in the chain concept. And I do acknowledge Philippe Colombe, who drew this and pointed out these aspects of the ACL study group this year, all the different links in the chain that we need to work on from selection right through to return to play. And I think it's very important that we focus on these parts to ensure the success. Our aim really is to reinforce every link in that chain, and I want to focus on various parts today. For ACL surgery, we have different techniques and different fixation options, and we'll each have our own aspect that we want to look at and which graph choice. The surgeon wants to be able to choose that best option and we really want one system that's versatile enough that we can use. So now I'm going to focus in the beginning of this session on hamstrings, the four strand or multi-strand construct and show the BTB interference screw. One of the key components of the Infinity system is the adjustable loop button so this can be reversed so this is a key part of it being reversible that the graph tension can then be adjusted and this is important to avoid over tensioning the system. For the proximal end there is an infinity cradle that goes with the adjust and, and an adjustable free loop that allows fixation for the all-in side techniques. Additional components are here with the guides for femur and the tibia for the reaming for the fixation with the easy start screw that I'm going to show you and then some of the accessories and the spade tip drill. What do I do? I'll use mainly a hamstring four to six strand graft. I want the graft to always be bigger than eight millimeters. We'll use BTB in the ACL and MCL laxity patient and in high performing soccer players and um, more in the revision situation. We we'll use allografts as well in some of the revisions and lateral tenodesis in young primaries based on our results from the, stability, uh, from the stability study and also in the revisions. And as yet, I've not converted to any all inside techniques. So when we look at hamstring, this is the graph preparation using a four strand hamstring and the infinity loop, the adjustable loop system. It's mounted on a card, so that is held in the graph preparation board and then we'll harvest the hamstrings and pass each through the loop with a clip on each end and then a suture, just one suture for each of either the semi-T or the gracilis and then the graft is prepared. We'll drill the femoral tunnel to 20 millimeters so we make a mark on the graft to know exactly when that is bottomed out in the tunnel and then make a mark on the infinity loop according to the length of the femoral tunnel. In this particular case that we're going to show, it's about 40 millimetres, so we'll make that mark. Once that is done, then the infinity loop system can be taken off from the card holder, and then we'll wrap it up ready for insertion, laying it into the vancomycin wrap, the key part to help prevent infection in ACL reconstruction. So this is the ACL reconstruction removing the old ACL or trying to preserve stump if possible and then viewing from the anteromedial portal using the RF probe referencing from the deep as aspect of the notch trying to position the femoral tunnel between the mid bundle position and the AM bundle position erring more towards the AM so we capture the appropriate fibers using the microfracture pick and then bending the knee up into full flexion to allow accurate positioning and good view of the situation. This is using the spade tip guide wire, which then has the markings on it. And once that's gone through the femoral cortex, it hooks on the femoral condyle. So here we're just short of 40 millimeters. And then reaming with 
the drill to 20 millimeters, which is going to be our depth of insertion of the hamstring tendons. A loop suture is then pulled through and left in the knee for, uh, while preparing the tibia. The guide is set at the appropriate point and here we're setting it just posterior to the anterior margin of the lateral meniscus on the down slope of the tibial spine and then from outside in drilling the guide wire before using the drill size to match the graft and retrieving the loop then through the tibia. So now to pass the graft in this situation we happen to be using the tensioner system and we pass the loop of the infinity, the ends of the infinity loop up through the tibia, pulling that out through onto the lateral side of the femur. The adjustable loop button is then pulled into the knee using the blue and white lead suture, which pulls that through. And when viewing from inside, we see the mark, which was at 40 millimeters disappear into the femoral tunnel, which means that the button has then reached the lateral aspect of the femur. It will automatically then flip as you pull back onto it. And then the adjustable loop is tensioned by pulling on the suture with the blue tag. Once that is through, we remove the reversible loop and then fix it, either using the tensioner system or just direct to the interference screw. And then the procedure is then finished, checking for tension at this point. This is the tibial guide and it's a one-handed device that can be adjusted to the right length for the appropriate length of the tunnel before in first inserting the tibial wire and this is using the tip guide. Moving on to the patella tendon graft and this is fixed with the easy start screw and the point of this screw is it is tapered at the tip to allow the ability to insert the screw without any need for tapping or for making a pilot hole. Here is the easy start screw going into place. The bone graft, the bone plug, is then inserted into the femur. And because of the shape of the screw, then it inserts very easily straight into that space without any need to do, do any dilation or any starting part to it. That particular easy start screw then, it's self-notching, self-tapping. Titanium screws 6 to 10 millimetres diameter and 15 to 30 millimetre length and those are the screws that are available and for the absorbable screw we use the Genesis matrix screw the biocomposite screw. So with that I'm now going to hand over to my colleagues. Hi I'm Dr. Seth Sherman from Stanford University. It's a privilege to be here alongside Tim and Peter sharing some of the unique aspects of our infinity knee ligament system. We have a wonderful diverse team of world experts on our knee design team that have been working tirelessly over the last several years to create this infinity knee system. We will show you first a ACL reconstruction using anteromedial portal reaming combined with a full tibia tunnel. First, I'd like to share the exciting features of the Infinity Antermedial Guide. We can see here a two millimeter offset for the back wall. We can also see the footprint portion of the guide, which is a nine millimeter inner diameter and a 10 millimeter outer diameter. Once the spade tip is engaged at the femoral footprint, we flex the knee to approximately 110 degrees, passing the pin out through the far cortex. This will allow safe reaming of our femoral tunnel. The spade tip is then passed out through the skin and a shuttle suture is passed. A large diameter graft is chosen for this example. The ends are marked 30 millimeters and a number two hi-fi suture is utilized with graft loop uh, to prepare the free ends of the graft. At this point, the femoral infinity button is lengthened greater than 10 centimeters and the looped aspect of the graft is placed in the center of the femoral uh, infinity button, which is then sized on the back table. The graft is pre-tensioned on the back table, as seen in this example. We also measure the distance from the lateral cortex to the looped aspect of the graft, which corresponds with our femoral tunnel length measurement. 
The graft can be marked at 20 millimeters so that we know how much of the femoral graft is placed into the aperture. At this point, a low profile intermedial portal reamer is passed over the 2.4 millimeter guide pin. A 25 millimeter by 8.5 millimeter femoral tunnel is created. Excess bone and soft tissue debris is removed and a shuttle suture is passed. It is important to visualize the femoral tunnel from the medial portal. This will give us reassurance that we've not blown the back wall. We'll now turn our attention to the infinity modular guide system for drilling of a full tibial tunnel. You can see the nice ratcheting uh, feature uh, and easy adjustability of the angle of fixation uh, with using just one hand. The guide is inserted through the intermedial portal and the footprint is placed anatomic on the ACL. Small stab incisions are made along the intermedial aspect of the tibia and a guide pin is passed through the center of the ACL footprint. The guide pin is then over reamed using our new constant diameter tibial reamers. The tibial tunnel is then cleansed of any bony and soft tissue debris, sparing as much of the tibial footprint of the ACL as possible. The external aperture is also meticulously clean for ease of graft passage. The sutures from the infinity femoral button are then shuttled uneventfully into the joint. The striped sutures are the leading sutures that are directing the femoral button towards the lateral femoral cortex. Slack should be taken up within the white strands. We can visualize through the medial portal, seeing the button go past the lateral cortex. Once this occurs, gentle back pressure will allow for flipping of the button. Once the button is secure, the white strand with the blue tip is the only one that will be utilized to bring the femoral graft into the socket. If the graft is brought too far up into the femur, there is an option for a reversibility tab. We can pull back on the reversible tab and then the graft will come back from the femoral tunnel, allowing for fine readjustment of your tension and retensioning as needed. The knee is taken through a range of motion arc and then brought to the desired uh, level of extension. The graft is pulled with a maximum manual pull while a biocomposite screw is inserted. We would now like to transition to all inside ACL reconstruction. The all inside technique has several potential advantages, including its minimal invasiveness, preservation of bone stock, circumferential soft tissue healing within the femoral and tibial sockets. There may be reduction in early and late pain, and it can also be helpful in salvage, revision, or pediatric situation. All inside ACL reconstruction features the infinity modular guide system, which includes five guide arms. Additionally, we will feature the infinity retro reamer. Right knee is visualized through the medial portal, looking at the femoral footprint. The guide is placed through the lateral portal. This has an inner diameter of nine millimeters, an outer diameter of 10 millimeters. These sharp tines will help with stability on the lateral wall. Once the internal guide is placed, attention is turned to the external aiming arm, which is typically slightly anterior angling to the midline and placed through a small stab incision. The guide sleeve is secured down to bone at this point, and the 3.5 millimeter retro reamer is reamed to the center of the anatomic footprint. The retro reamer is easily engaged as pictured here and then our femoral socket is reamed to the desired length and diameter after reaming the retro reamer is disengaged by pushing the buttons and excess bone and soft tissue debris is removed from the femoral tunnel the suture shuttle is then passed and a shuttle suture is placed this can be secured for later use within the lateral femoral tunnel. At this point, the viewing portal is switched to lateral and we're visualizing the tibial footprint. Using the infinity modular guide for the tibia, we can use single hand adjustment of the angle for tibial drilling. This is nicely placed through the medial portal and the footprint is at the anatomic insertion of the ACL. 
A small stab incision is made along the anteromedial aspect of the tibia. We try to hold the guide parallel to the tibial slope as we drill our 3.5 millimeter retro reamer. At this point, the external aspect of the guide is easily removed with a single hand and the retro reamer is engaged. Once we are finished retro reaming, the guide sleeve is mounted into place nine millimeters and the suture shuttle is passed and retrieved along with the femoral suture through the intermedial portal. The graft is then brought up from the back table and the infinity femoral button is shuttled into the joint. The white and blue striped stitch is the leading stitch, which is pulled until the uh, button is engaged on the far cortex. At this point, gentle back pressure confirms that the button has been easily flipped. Once the button's flipped, we just pull uniformly on the white with the blue end tag. And this allows for the graft to easily come in through the portal uh, into the femoral tunnel, which is provisionally seated approximately 15 to 20 millimeters. We visualize intraarticular while gently pulling on the graft to ensure that it is not bottomed out. If it is, you may consider going up into the femur a bit more prior to placing your infinity tibial button. Once we are happy with our amount of graft in the femoral and tibial sockets, we can place the infinity tibial button on the tibial free loop as visualized. Uniform pull on both of the free loop sutures will bring the tibial button down to the bone. This can be fixated in your desired amount of terminal extension. The knee can be cycled and you can tension and retension both on the femoral and tibial sides of the joint. We can cut the reversible tag and remove that additional suture prior to finishing the surgery. My name is Peter Verdonk and I will introduce you the PCL single bundle technique using the specifically designed PCL tibial aimer. It allows you to identify the sweet spot, introduce the pin, but also allows you to protect the soft tissues in the back using the broad shoulders of the same aimer. Once the tunnel is drilled, you can introduce a loop, which can then be picked up through the anteromedial or anterolateral portal, as you can see here. The technique uh, describes a single bundle hamstring for demonstration purposes using the infinity button, which is a reversible button. Therefore, it can be shortened for introduction of the graft into the femoral tunnel. But if necessary, it can also be lengthened and is reversible. This allows you to perfectly position the graft inside the tunnel. During arthroscopy, the first uh, procedure is drilling the femoral tunnel. The femoral tunnel position is identified uh, and then a very nice trick is to introduce a reamer with the guide pin already inside. You can therefore identify the sweet spot, then introduce the guide pin into the femur. Once the guide pin is in, you can over drill this with a badger reamer up to 20 to 25 millimeters, followed by introducing a loop on the femoral side. Once the femoral tunnel is done, we then go for the tibial side. You introduce the typical aimer in this very nice position at the drop-off zone, posteriorly in the back of the tibia. Introducing the tibial guide aimer allows you not only to find the sweet spot, but also protect the soft tissues in the back. Here, the guide pin is introduced. And next, the aimer is still inside and the reamer is introduced. As discussed previously, we now introduce a loop through the tibial uh, tunnel. This is a single bundle hamstring PCL reconstruction. Now introducing the graft in line with the femoral tunnel via the anterolateral portal under direct vision. The infinity loop is introduced and shortened. The graft uh, nicely follows and is snugly fit into the femoral tunnel. Once your position is uh, perfect and you're happy with that, you can remove the reversible option. And now the tendon can be introduced into the tibial bundle, in the, into the tibial tunnel. The graft is introduced into that tibial tunnel. It is tensioned and it is fixed on the tibial side using an interference screw.
I hope you enjoyed watching the surgical technique videos using the versatile infinity system, which is able to cover every aspect of ACL and PCL soft tissue reconstruction. The system allows individualized surgical techniques tailored to the needs of the patient and the surgeon.